Hey, I'm Damon John. I'm the CEO of FUBU. You know, FUBU is a, it's a lifestyle brand. It's a global brand. It's been around 15 years. It consists of everything from um, men's apparel to boots to bags. In wholesale, I've shipped over five or six billion dollars worth of product. Straight out of high school, I had a little van company. I was working nights at Red Lobster. Uh, when it snowed, I was shoveling snow for neighbors. When it was fall, I was raking leaves. Um, and all I was trying to do was just come up with that one big idea. I would say you should never, ever give up on your dreams because what else do you have to live for? Well, Damon, my friend, this is, this, I want to get a close up on this. This is 220s. This is what this man has started with to build a billion dollar empire. You're a guy who never let your dream even think about getting away from you, man. Take me to your young kid, 40 bucks, let's get to the billion. 40 bucks, you know, I saw a hat on TV that I wanted to buy. Some rappers are wearing it. I went uptown Manhattan. I drove all over, actually. I'm from Queens. I went uptown Manhattan. I couldn't find it, and I finally found it for, it cost about $20. Poorly constructed. It was like if you rip a sleeve off a shirt and tie it at the top and put it on your head. I knew how to sew a straight line. Well, you know, I didn't have much money growing up. My mother sewed my clothes. I watched her. I went home. I bought $40 of material. I sewed the hats, and I went outside and sold them. But why, what happened when you saw, okay, that was a hat that you wanted. What was the light bulb that said, okay, wait, that's a cool hat, I'm going to make it myself? You know, I was like, you know, a lot of other people who are always looking to make an extra dollar. And I thought that hopefully I can sell enough hats and, you know, maybe, you know, do this for a year or two years while the fad was around. So that's really what happened because I knew I couldn't find it and I knew that all other kids wanted it. So why not take advantage of that? And your first big selling night, you sell 800 bucks worth of hats. It was the Friday prior to Easter Sunday. 1992. I sold $800 worth of hats. It was freezing out there. I was on the way home, driving home, counting the $800, hit somebody in the rear. Guess how much it costs to fix their bumper? 800 bucks. 800 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but, first lesson in business. First man. lesson in business. You know, you make it and it goes just like Made that. You hungry but, that. Give me, I, I want the, the Damon game plan here because I, I'm sitting here watching you at home. Okay, obviously a bright guy. Okay, yeah, yeah 40 bucks sells out 800 bucks in a hat. How did you get to a billion dollars? I mean, give me, if you're just going to go real fast, I did this, I did this, this is my secrets, you're giving it to them right now. What were your secrets, man? Here was my secrets. I, went, I, I was addressing a market that was not acknowledged. It was being serviced but not acknowledged, first of all. I didn't have much money, but I knew that at that time, rap videos were our world's version of CNN. I took 10 shirts. It took me about two years, the same 10 shirts. I'd put it on a wrapper, take it back. Put it on another wrapper, take it back. Wear it on a date, dry clean it, put it on another wrapper, take it back. But I knew that those 10 shirts were millions and millions of dollars worth of advertising because that was a constant running commercial. Now we call it product integration or product placement. You didn't know what you just knew it. was a smart thing I to do. I just knew, first of all, I was next to a rapper like LL Cool J. I loved him as a rapper, so I, first of all, I was standing next to him. Second of all, he's wearing my product. Third of all, I was sitting at home going, that's my stuff on TV. I love it. So you were a smart guy. You were kind of a little bit of a fake it till you make it guy in that you literally had 10 shirts. You didn't own any more than that. Yet you put them on the wrappers. You seemed bigger. And even when you went to your first trade show, you did a fake it till you make it thing where you couldn't afford a booth. Couldn't afford a booth. Four, it was four of us in FUBU. So about five of us flew out to the magic show in Las Vegas. We all stayed in, uh, you know, uh, a little hotel room, two beds. We all slept on the beds there. You know, well, obviously, I, mean, I slept on the floor, they slept on the bed, right. whatever the case was. And we told all the buyers in the country, we sent out mailers with pictures of all these artists wearing the product that will be there. And come there and check out our product. Wrote $300,000 worth of orders that weekend. As you're going through this, nobody taught you how to do any of this, right? No way. There was no, no lessons, nothing anywhere. Where did the voice come from and say, do this, go for it, hit it this way, swing it that way? You know, I'm, I'm going to be very honest. I made a lot of mistakes, and I would not suggest somebody to go into it so blindly. Some of the problem is, though, that when I, because I wasn't trained of the things that could not happen out there, I wasn't trained of the faults I would have had. But, you know, it was always my mother instilled in me, your homework is what's going to make you rich. And I knew all, you know, I knew I didn't have that education, um, but I knew I had drive. A lot of people said, yeah, luck, but it's not luck. You know, there is no such thing as luck. It's when desire and faith meets opportunity. And that's straight up what it was. And every time I saw an opportunity, I jumped on it. You, you know, we use the word street smarts a lot on this show. Not everybody is from the streets. Correct. So I want you to share the luxury 
of being from the streets, some of the lessons that you learned that some man or woman who didn't grow up on the streets can't have, because there is a luxury of growing up on the street. I, I use that, yes. obviously, that term. So what are those? Well, the luxury of being on the streets is that you have, a lot of times, you have nothing. So you only have reward coming to you. You also see a lot of the people around you falling by the wayside. You also become creative, and you have to find a way to get out of those streets. And you have to do it with a lot of common sense. If you're not shown and read all those books, you don't read all those books or somebody read them to you, the fact of all the ways you can fail, you don't know that those, those obstacles are there. All sure. you know is you're putting your eye on the prize and you're going for it and nobody's going to stop you. Tonight's theme is a lot of people never go for their dream. They put it on hold. And a lot of Absolutely. people out there in their 30s, 40s, 50s, well, I wanted to be a film director, but I had to pay the bills mm -hmm. and so now I sell insurance or... You know, I wanted to be a fashion designer, but I had a kid, so now I'm a soccer mom. Not does anyone want to be a soccer mom? You know, what do you say to people? Because you're a guy that never left your dream behind. Right. The key to grabbing that dream at any age? Well, the key to grabbing the dream at any age is you're still going to get to that age of 90, 100, uh, hopefully 110, and pass away, right? So you're, what are you doing during that course of time? Second of all, who is telling you that your dream is not going to work? Is it the people that that's in their best interest? And third of all... You know, you'll never be able to sleep if you can't dream. You know, and that's just the biggest thing. We love it. Damon John, man, Thank did you. not let his dream slip away. Founder and CEO of FUBU, billion dollar empire, and author of Display of Power. Get the dreams back, guys, women. We're not letting them go tonight. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>